Hey guys, it's Hila here, Saturday Night Stitch, and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you love all things sewing, sewing related, then hit that subscribe button because I put out sewing related content every week or so. And also, if you're interested in other aspects of life that include running a large household family, because I got five kids, then also do check out my other channel, House of Hila, where I post vlog style uh, things, just random stuff. It's a lot of fun. Just subscribe the link is in the description box down below okay so in the meantime today um i'm going to share with you one of my uh, favorite teeny tiny little sewing machines it's a vintage sewing machine and it's called a frista and rossman cub 4 it's really cute so i'm just going to show it to you because this weekend i was tinkering around on it i came up into the sewing cave didn't really feel like sewing that much so i decided to look at my sewing machines my vintage sewing machines and do some maintenance work on them i did some maintenance work on my 201k i also did some maintenance work on my 401g and i was like hang on i haven't checked out my freestand rossman cub for quite a while and it's so darn cute so i decided i'm going to show it to you so the freestand rossman cub 4 is a compact lightweight automatic machine and it's got quite a lot of built-in practical stitches so first of all it comes in this really cute and snazzy 60s style case it's a bakelite plastic case so quick pointer with vintage sewing magazines uh, not sewing magazines vintage sewing machines you're not supposed to lift them up like that okay and um so it's got a a little case with a button that you press down and there you have it's in there and what's quite nice about the case is it's got this circular opening where your turning wheel sort of sticks out and as i said it's a small compact it was designed to be um, a handheld hand carried um, one so freestyle and Ross rossman as far as i remember it's a german manufacturing company so the idea is you then just lift it out with more grace than i did there but it's got a like a you know the carry case is really really cute you know um and there we go it's got the pedal which you would pack in here but my pedal is already plugged in because i was checking it and right off the bat your thread spool it's a retractable one you pull it out and then you can put your thread spool in there which is pretty cool and it's got a reverse stitch so you press this is the thing that you use for the reverse stitch it's got a light on here which lights up that section over there um, this is your stitch length control so this is how wide you want your stitch and if you are using zigzag so if you're doing a straight stitch this has to be at zero and if you do this this is your zigzag width this is where your tension controller is okay and it's got a really interesting way of being threaded up so it was quite unusual and i'll show that to you um later so it's a very simple um very easy to use machine i've uh i was playing around with it uh sewing some scraps because it's got an elastic stitch so i was uh, sewing using scuba just to see what it can do and uh, as well i was also using it on um this thick cottony satiny type fabric and it's got a really pretty stitch really really beautiful stitch as you can see um so yeah but one of the other really cute things about it i'm just going to pick up the camera and move it is it's got this little compartment here where look at that so that's where the caddy is right so you just close it like that and then it goes up and then it does that which is really really pretty awesome i think it's and it just adds to its cuteness and its adorableness okay so you can actually remove this completely and then you can see there the side loading um bobbin is down there and so you can sew if you wanted to have that open if you're constantly having to change it uh, so yeah, so it's a really, really cute little machine. Colors, you know, it's got these beautiful, beautiful colors. And 
I like that it still has the sticker from the original place where the person got it, I presume, and it tells you to service it every 12 months. This was back in the day where they used to have lots of places that could service your sewing machines for you. Okay, so the different stitches that it has, you can select them from here. So this is the triple stitch, which is um, for sewing stretch fabrics. This one is for smocking, um, not smoking, but smocking, which is like an heirloom style. And then these ones are for doing buttonholes. So it's not quite a one-step button hauler, but it does do some buttonholes. And this is for when you're just doing straight stitch. So it's got overcasting stitches and some you know just a couple of uh, fancy decorative stitches so this is the foot pedal so it's got a nice wide uh, foot pedal and i was quite lucky to find one that's in really good condition you can kind of tell how well used they were because the ones that are well used these would be almost certainly um gone and you'd have to replace them um but yeah, so it's working. I'll show you how it works in a bit. One of the key features um, that I quite like about this is that it's got um, a straight stitch plate, which is really good if you're sewing with lighter weight fabrics. If you've ever done that thing where you begin to sew and your fabric gets eaten up, and it's usually because you've got a zigzag plate on there, but straight stitch uh, straight stitch plates really make life so much easier and you'd have to use um, this foot which is the foot that came uh, with this machine and so the idea is you change it when you want to do straight stitching it's also got a buttonhole foot which you use in conjunction with the buttonhole options over here but sadly this one is broken it's sort of broken um, off but I'll show you what it's supposed to look like this is the manual that came with it and it's supposed to be kind of like that the buttonhole guide but unfortunately the one that I have for this is broken so I wasn't able to test the buttonholes I was able to test most of the other stitches but not that the needles that you use for the cub 4 are these ones the 130 slash 705 H or the 15 by 1 H so with the cub 4, you can get an extended working um, space just by you push that up, pull this out, put that down like so, and then you and then you've got a little bit of an extended working space um, on there so here's a list of all of the stitches that you can do because I couldn't remember them all off the top of my head but it does straight and zigzag it does blind hems it does fancy hems a stretch stitch an elastic stitch a smoking stitch buttonhole making and a mending stitch so not too bad for something that was built to be a lightweight compact portable machine so the manual is quite useful. It shows you how to do lace sewing and it shows you how to do appliques. And it's also got twin needle capacity, which is pretty impressive for a machine um, of its age. It also shows you how to do zipper with its own invisible zipper foot and the button holes. It takes you through the instructions for that. And it's also got a shank where you can sew button holes, uh, sorry, buttons on. And it's got, um, for leather sewing, it's got the roller foot for leather sewing. This is the roller foot. So you can see it's got rollers so that this doesn't get stuck on leather. And it's also got blind stitching um, on there. And it shows you how to do overcast and stretch stitching. Because this is the cub for... All of these are available on this uh, particular one. It also shows you how to do darning and freehand embroidery and fancy hemming and a, a smocking stretch stitching, which kind of looks like that. And I'm quite keen to try that. I tried that without the binding in the back and it looked quite nice. And then you have the 
um, elastic stretch stitching which I tried using and that was pretty good and then it's got instructions for how to oil it and the troubleshooting so all in all quite a really useful manual to have so now I'm going to show you how to thread it because it's got a really unique threading feature so some of the stitching would require you to have your feed dogs down and this is how you get the feed dogs down that's where it is so you'd have to take apart the compartment and then you put your feed dogs back up this works in any normal way that um, a side loading machine does I'm familiar with this because my Joneses actually uses this I'll just take it out and show it to you there we go, just like any other normal vintage machine. Okay, so to thread it, you grab your thread or your bobbin and bring it over here. Right at the back here, you have to put your thread through. Hang on. Let me get it to focus. Can you see that? You have to get it through there and the thread goes through here and then the tension disc here. So what that would look like. Okay, so I've moved it around the back so that you can see how that would work. So you'd thread that through there. you kind of want to do it in a way that you actually catch it which is a it's actually a little bit fiddly which is why i was saying that it's quite a different um way of doing it there we go so then you get that and then you thread it through there and when you come to the front, you have to get it here, between this knob and that, that's where the tension discs are, which is something I've never seen before. And once you get it through, you can feel that it's gone through. And then you just pull it through this loop here. Okay, and then you go down there. And up here, get your needle up to its the pull up lever to its highest point, slide it in back through that loop through another guy. Um, so, so because this has got a twin a needle capability, which means you've got two threads, it's actually got two little guides here two little loops for you to get your threads through and I found that it's better to put it on this one because you have to thread it from front to rear um, and in most other machines the guide is usually on this other side certainly with some of the ones that I use anyway but I don't think it makes a difference either way but I just thought it was quite interesting that it has got um, thread guides for if you're using uh, both um, using your twin needle capacity and as I said before you thread it from front to rear okay and then once you've done that pull your thread up and there we go you're ready to sew okay It's got a thread cutter. Now I'm just going to do the zigzag stitch. So to do the zigzag, I just turn Okay. 
Okay, and here we go. That's a reasonably nice stitch. This does get really hot though, the light bulb, because it's not an LED, it does get hot, so I tend to have it switched off when I am sewing. So it's a little bit of a trick when you're putting this back, you sort of have to slide it in. And it is a little bit fiddly, but it's okay for the amount of cuteness that you're getting. Okay, so you have to slide it in so that it's like this. Then you pull it over, then you do that. And... So even though this is a compact three-quarter machine, it is very heavy, okay? So this, just to give you an idea, look at how much my arms are working to lift it. So, you know, this is very useful during quarantine when you can't go to the gym. <laughs> so I just do my biceps and triceps workout. Oh my God, no, this is heavy. <clears throat> okay, I can see why seamstresses of the bygone eras were very strong because they had to lift these things around. I kid you not, this is supposed to be a portable machine, but it is super heavy. <sighs> Already feeling it. But so what I can find, what I found out about Frista and Rossmann is that it was a German company, and it was at one point the biggest manufacturer of sewing machines in Germany even though this one was made in Japan, which is pretty cool because there was a point where Japan manufacturing and engineering was actually <laughs> really amazing. And in fact, there was a point in which the Singer 15 clones that were coming out of Japan after World War II were considered just as good as Singer itself. So it's a piece of Japanese engineering, which is pretty awesome. I don't know if they still make sewing machines. I know that they make scissors because one of my first pair of dressmaker scissors was a Frista and Rossman. But yeah, that's it. That's uh, my Frista and Rossman Cub 4 sewing machine, which I think is really, really cute. I initially bought it so that it could something that could be something that the kids could use because I thought it's so small and compact and cute. And I picked it up for 35 quid. And then I found out how heavy it was and then realized straight away that uh, probably not a good idea for the kids because I want it for myself. And they can use it occasionally. But it's a good little piece of machine. I'm quite happy with the stitching. I will try and use it for one of my skirt sewing patterns. I hope that you've enjoyed this post. And if you did, give it a big thumbs up down below. Do you have a Freestand Rossman vintage sewing machine or just a Freestand Rossman sewing machine in general? Let me know in the comments box down below. I'd love to find out more information about that. And also, are you a general level of vintage sewing machines as well? It's just kind of like a nice thing to do when you don't feel like sewing, playing around with your vintage sewing machines. <laughs> if you haven't already, do subscribe. I put, I put out new sewing related content every single week. Um, so yeah, as I see you next time, happy sewing. Bye. I don't know about you guys, but when I was reading this, this, this is just a freaky looking doll. Not sure why they were using mannequins, but gosh, that's scary. I didn't really grow up with dolls, so dolls kind of freak me out. It's probably why my kids don't have dolls. <laughs> but oh man, that 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 that's giving me the heebie-jeebies right there. Um, another one's like, what's what's up with that? Oh. Why did they get a mannequin that's got that pose? And then the same mannequin has got this pose where it's kind of like... Man, vintage sewing machines, they give you a lot to think about.